Leo. Welcome, Knight of Cups Tarot, and welcome to your cards and astrology for July. So it's a really intense month for you guys. Um, this year was always going to be a little bit harder on my fixed signs. That's what 2020 is really trying to do is get you to be a little bit more fixed. And in the month of July, and I, and I know that June was like super intense. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of changes, a lot of stuff coming in, stuff going out. It's kind of hard to keep up. We're in the midst of like eclipse season and all these um these planets at station retrograde um finally mercury starting to go direct we're starting to get a little bit more clarity but like things are still weird we know they're weird but that's because there's some stuff that there we still have to do we're kind of still in the building phases trying to figure out where we want to go next what do we want to do next what are the new cycles we want to introduce into our lives and July is, actually I'm getting a lot of very um, specific messages for you guys, which is interesting. I'm actually going to do something a little bit different than I've ever done here before. But what I want to explain to you is the beginning of the ingress into cancer season for you. This is 12th house stuff. This is big spiritual stuff, big breaking up of our conscious or subconscious drives and a little bit of a death of the ego usually there's a surrendering process that comes with this house and there's this grand trine that we have beginning and kind of highlighting all of cancer season which is a grand water trine and this is going on in your fourth eighth and twelfth house these are all cadent houses these are all your watery emotional places within your chart so it's probably easy to say that this month, July, is going to be pretty intense and probably very, very emotional. And it's probably the kinds of things that happen that change you internally, that change your processes, your priorities, your shifts and your beliefs. So super important month. Now, Never ever have I started a reading where they instructed me to find a song. But as I was starting to shuffle your cards, they asked me to randomly play a song and I did. Um, I just went through and just hit kind of next song on, on everything that I have in this large playlist. And the song that came up was Shallow. Um, I don't know if you guys know the movie, A Star Is Born, but it's, um, Shallow by Lady Gaga and I believe Bradley Cooper, I'm not sure, but um, really beautiful song and it's about going deeper. It's about the energy of like making the emotional investment, taking the risk, diving into something that's probably pretty profound and probably something that's meant to change us a lot on an emotional level. So... I wasn't sure really if I was gonna bring that whole thing up in your reading until I started to do your cards. And one of the cards out underneath the death card, which is the eighth house, which is you know major emphasis on your eighth house this month, um, we have the card deep diver, diving into a task. And so I'm actually gonna start this reading by reading to you the actual meaning of this card because I think it, it really coincides with the song and with the new emotional experience that you're going to be submerging in this month. Embracing risk, diving into a task, and new discoveries. It's easy to play in the shallows where the waters are clear and you could see all that glitters by your feet. Anyone can venture here, there is little risk, nothing to discover, no dark secret, nothing that you can't already perceive. The treasure has long been picked away, replaced by a gentle certainty, and in the shallow river is safety and no surprises. But that's not who's calling you now. The deep diver invites you to take the plunge with him. 
You can't see the bottom, but you must swim into the dark depths to find the mystery that eludes you now. He knows where the pearls lie underneath the ancient sands. You are called to look beyond the surface of things for your answer. Let your intuition propel you into the water, allowing your memories to swirl around you and your emotions to well up as you face the unknown. Your curious curiosity will be your greatest guide. You'll surely discover something wondrous to bring back to everyone who is waiting by the shore, but only you will truly know the value of your discovery. Are you willing to do the work? Dive in, make the commitment and see it through. You'll be amazed. So you're getting a sense of where we're going here with this reading and um, how the next month is gonna play out for you. I really feel, uh, Leo, as if there's a full transformation happening here in this tiny little 30 day cycle. Now, I have been saying in a lot of my readings, and this is kind of more intuitive um, than anything else, a little more based on the astrology. Um, I don't think that this reading is just for 30 days. Look, we're picking up steam. We're like getting this forward movement, which is super important. We're all wanting to get this kind of traction going all year round, you know. It's kind of that feeling like we finally have a summer time after last summer, which we were restricted. We didn't get to travel. We didn't get to see our loved ones. This summer is a chance to make up for it. And there is something of a feeling of being in an old way of life, which was probably isolated or I get the feeling of like cold and dry. And we're moving into a warmer, more fertile environment in our lives, in our um, psychology even. I, I think we're all having a little bit of the spiritual awakening. And I think it's really super profound for you guys. Now I say that because you are coming out this month as the Knight of Cups. Now... This is even surprising to me because Leo season, your birthday coming next month, this is like your 12th house transit. And there's like this deep emotional side to you. Now, what I really like about it is it tells me that you're not really afraid of this. Maybe there's some stuff you've been working on. Maybe there's been some situations that have come into your life, people or other players kind of entering the realm and it's all been a process of opening the heart for Leo. See, when I think about the shallow versus the deep dive, I think Leos have been playing it kind of safe. Staying in a safe place, not making any rash decisions, but also kind of being stuck in the not so leo -y place. Saturn opposing you could definitely make you feel a little bit like you can't be yourself or you can't follow your dreams or your desires or there's like brick walls everywhere that you turn but all of a sudden Saturn goes direct and there's I mean, Saturn goes retrograde and now we have Jupiter going retrograde and we have Neptune going retrograde in the eighth house and there's an adjustment period. And I think that the Knight of Cups is kind of that fluidity energy and that ability to go with the flow, to just see where this goes without the fear, without the judgment, without the expectations. And I like this because I also feel like the universe is inviting you to start to really express yourself in a more emotional place. If you've been in situations, if you've been in relationships where you've had to kind of hold your feelings in or not say all of the things, you know, same with a job. Like if you've been in a job that you're not absolutely in love with, Saturn, eighth house, I'm sorry, Saturn in your seventh house, like, these things aren't going to work because if it's not built of integrity, if it's not something that is authentically you, Saturn's going to take it. So you might be in a little bit of a flux period this month with the give and take. 
Now I say that because your environment card is that of the temperance. And this is very much always like that give and take with me. You know, you notice there's like kind of the two of pentacles vibe here. And sometimes it's like the two of cups, one being poured in, into the other. And there's like a whole processing time, which talks about the divine timing of things. And I think that you sense that things are ready, that it's time, that this is a safe time, and your environment is saying it's time. This is a safe time. That there are things coming together now, people coming together now, maybe new people entering your lives, and these people are there to serve as kind of this vehicle for you to open your heart and to become more vulnerable and to start looking at those areas of your life where maybe you're afraid to be judged. Because I do get a sense of fear, but like being brave enough to overcome it, you know? What is that? Courage isn't not being afraid, it's doing it anyways kind of thing. And that's kind of the vibe that I pick up here between you and your environment, like this thing right in front of you is kind of scary. I mean, there's no real guarantees. You don't know how it's going to go. You don't have all the answers. There's no promises. And it's more about how it makes you feel, your emotional tie to it. And I feel like you're being pulled because whenever we have the temperance card, there's kind of an element of like the universe leading you into this, guiding you into this. Like this feels almost like faded events. This is like the right place, the right time. You meet that person that could give you that dream job, or you meet that person that wants to make that investment in you. You suddenly find yourself at a weird coffee shop you've never been in and you meet the love of your life. That's because it's the right time. Now looking at the first three cards in your nine card block, I'm going to put a picture up here. Um, we have the chariot, the ace of wands, and the ten of swords. Now this energy I super, super love. I love the chariot and I get this from you. I get this being kind of a part of you and this is definitely like Sun, Venus, Mars, all that 12th house stuff that you've been going through for the past month. Kind of like going through all of that. You know, the chariot card could represent overcoming the obstacles. And the obstacles in the 12th house is kind of our ability to self-sabotage things, you know. Now, underneath the temperance card, we have the 12th house escape. And underneath your card, the Knight of Cups, we have adjustments are required third, third quarter moon. 12th house escape. And I think that you've probably had to look really honestly at yourself and your self-sabotaging ways. Like, true story, Leo. There's a part of you that could just operate out of a place of ego. I want this, and I want this to want me to and you could plow through these situations and you could really make things happen. You could really get your heart set on something looking a certain way or having a certain outcome. And that's kind of that cancer chariot energy. But sometimes when the chariot card is there, there might be things that we're overlooking. And that's where I think this 12th house escape is like where we could maybe not be so willing to look at ourselves 
the actions that we take. Because the chariot and the ace of wands is definitely all about the forward movement. And it can be pretty impulsive, right? That's fire and there's water. And so there's movement, right? Like both of those elements, once they get moving, it's pretty difficult to stop, right? Like a chariot would be like the tidal wave or the tsunami and the ace of wands would be like the wildfire. And once they're let loose, it's very hard to contain. And for some of you, I feel like this 10 of swords was probably a habit or a cycle of how you contained yourself. How you kept all of these things kind of bottled up. It was like parts of yourself that you weren't really allowing anybody else to see. I think that you know that those parts of yourself are really important, right? Like the things that you want, the things that you're emotionally a vibrational match for. Like Leo might have spent a lot of time settling in relationships because they look good or they fit like this list that you had in your head of like, how it's supposed to go or you know like you marry the guy you're dating at 29 because you always said that you wanted to be married by 30 you know and it's like these these things that we do or these stories that we tell ourselves and all of a sudden we end up in these places because we listen to all of that i feel like there's like an old version of yourself that's looking back at these earlier times in your life and laughing and why you thought it was so important in the first place. Would it have mattered if you got married at 33? If you waited for the right person? Would it, be, would it have mattered if you waited until you were 65? If it was the absolute right person? Same with a career. Maybe some of you really wanted to be something that required... 20 years of college and your parents were like, yeah, no, no way, not paying for that. And so you settle for less because you settle for something that's attainable, that's already there, that's easy. And the thing about now, the thing about the stuff that's coming in now, because we're starting the new cycles and we're all doing things differently than we've ever done before. We have 2020 to thank for that. We have everything from, you know, the Leo Aquarius eclipses back in 2018 and 19 all the way through. Like we've been under this tremendous amount of change and like in every aspect of life, we're starting to look at things and like why I would never do it that way again. I would never approach that situation that way again because I'm older, because I'm wiser, because I learned all of these lessons, right? Saturn in your seventh, like if you didn't learn the lessons, you're learning them now. You're looking at them now. And all this stuff starts to go through your 12th house. You start to get really honest with yourself and you're like, okay, I can't be like in victim mode because my life is exactly how I wanted it. It's exactly how I created it. And I'm here in this place, in this time, in this marriage, in this job, in this relationship because at one point it felt safe to me. But I don't think that Leo wants safety as much as it used to. See, I think that there's something waking up for Leo. There's something that's making life feel more like an adventure. And that's what will happen mid-month as things start to move out of your 12th house and into your first. And then boom, we have this beautiful mars venus conjunction which happens about every two years and here we are in our heart place again like we found ourselves and leo starts to look at life and it says you know what i want to operate from my heart now i only want to participate in things that i'm passionate about 
and I'm done like turning down the things or not making the offers or not speaking my truth. Like I think those things are ending for Leo, which means there's a little bit of a death process here. And this is all eighth house stuff, guys. There's endings and then there's always beginnings. Ten of swords with a death card. If we want the new life, we have to close out the old. And the only way we close out the old is to be honest and true to ourselves. Underneath the chariot card comes the strength card. The Ace of Wands is a Four of Wands, and the Ten of Swords is the Judgment card. Guys, this is such beautiful, beautiful energy of advancement, of becoming so wise, and putting it, like, using that wisdom to, like, actually change your life. Now, the Chariot with the Strength card is your ability to temper your desire. And I think, you know, here, especially with the card of temperance, not everything's gonna be like ready when Leo is ready, right? Like if you wanna get into a relationship or you wanna like travel the world, the pieces are gonna need to come together. There's still a process. It's not perfect. But to me, strength underneath the chariot is like hold the space hold the vision because it means so much to you because it's such a vibrational match because it's that thing that you know that your soul is kind of driving you forward regardless of your mind even like I don't think that there's a whole lot of talking yourself out of this like there just seems to be this need that overcomes you and yet there's like this super awesome intelligence as well there's like the willpower to get things in place to let people, you know, like honor other people's timelines as well. And we have the Ace of Wands and we have the Four of Wands. And that's like turning the spark into a solid foundation. And that in itself is a process of alchemy, the temperance card. Like things don't happen overnight. Relationships aren't born overnight. Most likely if you meet the love of your life, probably better to still go through like the whole process of getting to know each other because that's such a important part of the journey right you don't just meet somebody run off to Vegas and get married and boom that like, gets commitment it's the process that you're meant to experience right now process of falling in love the process of becoming vulnerable you have to actually delve into the emotions and how you feel as these opportunities are coming into fruition because you know you're building your own reality. Like I think that's what we're all kind of waking up to. We're all starting to take personal responsibility for our lives, dropping the whole victim mentality, taking our power back in our lives. And that means stepping out of place of being afraid or staying small or being safe. And the Ace of Wands and the Four of Wands is a promise that there will be success, that this thing will grow. Whatever the spark is for you, a new job, a new love interest, it's growing. It's growing into something stable. And as it is in that process, the judgment card directly underneath the Ten of Swords is like your contribution. And it's also the reason why this is going differently than the other situations in the past. This is why it's different. This is why it will remain more stable because it's of your vibration. So I think the old us, the part of us that wanted to play it safe, that wanted to just marry that guy we were dating at 29, you know, like these are the consequences. And you know that this is how you sold yourself short, which is how you got in the situation in the first place, which are all of the wisdom that you're applying to the current situation. 
And therefore that strength with the chariot card is the power to move forward, but also the emotional intelligence to not push it. And I don't see Leo forcing anything right now. I see Leo allowing, which tells me that Leo maybe isn't so hyper-focused on what it's got to look like. Like maybe this is a, a true achievement of how you've been able to release and let go and not control the scenario so much. And when you do that, when you let things grow at their own pace and become what they truly are and you're not trying to like make it something that you're not, that's the awakening. And that's the judgment card. And that's exactly what happens when we're in retrograde Mercury. Guys, I can't say enough. We have the four of wands in the center of the card. We have the temperance card, which is divine support. And we have the judgment card. And the death card, like there's there's a lot of major arcana, arcana here and there's a lot of forward movement and direction, but from a much stronger and wiser place. And I know that eighth house stuff can make you like a little fearful. Like, oh my God, I'm going to put myself out here. Oh my God, I'm like going to say this thing. I'm going to tell this person that I love them. And it's so scary and then you get stuck in like that whole this is what it felt like last time and look how that turned out or you know fear of rejection and but you're not that same person because of the wisdom that you're bringing here because of the maturity look i don't have any pages i've got kings i've got major arcana there's no pages here there's no immaturity this is you wanting to advance something to the next level because you know it's right for you. But it's not from a place of ego. It's not because of something that you just simply desire. Look, this is not like the new sports car or the, the new Kate Spade purse or whatever, you know? It's not that. This is something that's attached to your soul, something that speaks to your heart. It's something very soft, something that you've always wanted and it comes with a lot of emotional freedom. You know, if this is a, a person or a relationship, it's someone who really loves you for you, that allows you to be you. You don't have to pretend, you don't have to be afraid to say all the things, this is safe. And I say that because here we have the 12th house and then we have this Seven of Cups. And this is always so ironic to me because we have the Seven of Cups and the Five of Wands and the King of Swords. And this is where things get a little bit tricky, right? <laughs> like you can't, I don't know, like you can't have the light without the dark. They always go hand in hand. When certain things start to enter our lives, a lot of times, you get attracted into situations that are like kind of testing you. And I feel like that with the seven of cups, the chariot and the strength. Remember I said that it was kind of like, hold your vision, hold your space. If there are reasons why, okay, mixed messages, other people's hesitation, maybe you thought this thing was like really going somewhere and then all of a sudden like they're not returning your text. All of a sudden, you're right back to this place of like, oh, holy shit, I don't know where this is going. What am I doing? Right? And it could feel kind of up. Like I said that my stomach got like a flip, like I was going down a hill on a roller coaster, like a little bit of lost your breath, a little bit of panic there. Again, this is like eighth house stuff. Look, when you come into alignment with things, when you start to realize that something is meant for you, it tends to shake up the rest of your worlds. That's just how energy works. And because you begin to change, the outside world has to change. And the Seven of Cups is sort of like, I don't feel it so much as confusion. 
because it's over the strength card, I feel like there's intense focus. Which means that you have the ability probably intuitively at the very least to not get distracted, to overcome the, the, the old negative patterns, to overcome the old behavior because this seven of cups next to this 12th house, the escape. I mean, for some of you, this could be you just like getting your health in order. Maybe like taking a real honest look at like how much you have a couple of drinks a week or, you know, do something else to kind of escape or numb out or whatever, and that's fine. But there seems to be like some big changes that you want in your life. Maybe that's partly your physical health and maybe there's some things where you're like yeah but if I'm gonna make this big change I probably have to address that too right for some of you it's turning to more 12th house like stuff which could be more spirituality you could really be diving into or being carried into some sort of a spiritual awakening here with the death card all these cadent watery houses being activated right now you know, it, it, it will, <laughs> Neptune, which by the way, um, eighth house, Neptune, Jupiter, and Neptune um, going retrograde this month. Like, there's a whole lot of navigating through this emotional landmine. And it could begin to feel kind of hard and overwhelming. Like there's a lot of changes that need to be made and am I gonna have enough strength? Am I gonna wanna keep doing this? I'm gonna be able to follow through on this. This feels heavy and like a lot of work. And there's parts of us that might wanna take the easy way out or might just wanna like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm, I don't really want a relationship like that or I, why would I wanna invite that kind of drama in our life? Why would I wanna start that kind of trouble? But the difference is, I think you feel it like in your soul. I think that you know that above all else, and let's not forget this four of wands in this very center of the reading. And we have the ace of wands above it and the five of wands below it. Also, Leo, I'm not going to lie, you might have some haters. I don't always get that here. For some reason, underneath this four of wands, I get like a lot of other people's opinions, right? Probably very much unsolicited. Like a lot of people, like you might be falling in love with someone and you, you know, want to deepen the commitment or take it to the next level. Or maybe this is you moving in with somebody and all of a sudden like this five of wands, these are like the exes or the friends that are like you know what you're doing and blah 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 and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that and you know you have the strength card above this seven of cups so i think it's just going to be annoying i don't think that it's going to change your mind it, it might confuse you it might have you stop and kind of think about how this will affect other people like probably something that you have to consider maybe with the seven of cups there's like a lot of options leo maybe you're dating a few different people and then you meet somebody really special and like the five of wands is having to let the other people down probably having to close out that cycle of like playing the field or whatever you know if you are in um a stickier situation than that it's probably having to choose one certain thing over the other and the seven of cups five of wands king of swords does tell me that you're going to need to cut out other people's opinions there's just going to be a lot of people trying to tell leo what to do how to do it and i just don't think it's going to fly this month because you're being led from your heart, from your emotions, from your intuition, you know, probably better to take time to meditate and to hone into like that spiritual realm, kind of allow the guides and your higher self to lead you into or navigate through the confusion, not so much other people. 
you know. Um, and I think that's exactly what the King of Swords is. And I, and I also want to say that you're going to have the ability to see other people's motives really clearly this month, guys. Ten of Swords, Judgment card, and the King of Swords. Like, you're going to have the ability to cut other people's bullshit out and not be affected by it. Because there's just, like I said, this intense focus for Leo. Like, this is what I want. This is what I want more than anything. This is what I want to do with my life. This is a person I want to spend my life with. Like, that's it. That focus. And this month, there might be some weeds poking out, right? That you got to kind of pull. King of Swords, you have to cut these things off. Because they're no longer, you know, they're no longer on your frequency. Probably not things that you want to bring to the next level. Probably not things that you want to invite to grow with you. Now, like I said, underneath the death card is a star card. And this is at Aquarius Energy, your seventh house. Look, there's a, there's a cycle ending in your relationship processes like the type of people that you're dating or the kind of situation that you're in. There's a definite transformation and change occurring here and it's healing and it's better for you. The last Oracle card I pulled for you is card number 23, the golden, golden palace. And this is kind of really in line with this four of wands and i actually want to take the time to read this one to you as well i don't know why leo but i'm getting these messages so let's just go with it golden palace there's always enough the golden palace card represents good fortune ambitions fulfilled wealth and prosperity it may also indicate emotional fulfillment as perhaps you're entering a time of happiness that's long overdue the message here is that self-worth isn't measured by what you have, no matter how abundant your life is. Instead, it comes from what you are, how authentically you're living your life, and how much love you're willing to share. Granted, receiving this card does indicate material gain and a furthering of tangible rewards, but things come and go, and knowing your true value leads to even greater riches now. Share the wealth. Eighth house stuff, guys. Eighth house stuff. It's about getting out of the shallow and um, really sharing your energy with the right people and trusting it. All right, Leo. Um, beautiful reading, guys. I do hope that you have a really amazing Cancer and Leo season. I hope you guys have a great birthday. I'll see you probably in some way, shape, or form for the mid-month. Um, and then I will see you for your August readings. Oh my gosh. All right, guys. Have a great month. Take care. Bye.